So welcome to lecture 34 of MCS 472. Uh, this lecture is on traffic flow modeling uh, within the context of industrial mathematics and computation. So in particular, we will consider the transport equation once again, the transport equation, but now derived from the continuity equation. So the first goal of this lecture is to introduce the distributed nature of partial differential equations. So we are solving problems over regions. Uh, with an ordinary differential equation, we have a couple of parameters and we look uh, and, and that model, that solution of the ordinary differential equation can actually say everything that we want to know. It's highly concentrated. With problems such as traffic flow, um, one considers an entire road and one has many actors on this. Uh, so we can use one differential equation for one car or for a pair of two cars, as we have done. But you can't really do this if you want to look at a platoon of cars. Um, so that's essentially the, 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 the first and important message in this lecture. What is other also important um, is the industrial project. Uh, so this is a project driven course and uh, I will end with a proposal for a project uh, to invite you to gather data and to do a least square fit on a study in traffic flow. Um, so a well studied and uh, well studied and well researched problem. Uh, what I will try to do today is to uh, explain the Green Shields model, uh, the simplest model, but still already very interesting. So we will essentially derive the pictures that are behind me here. Um, and uh, I forgot there is a third thing. There's always a third thing. Um, the main goal of the lectures is that you gain some access to the literature, that you can read uh, the uh, reference where I have uh, gotten the Green Shields model and that you can also better understand the textbook. Okay, so let's look at the problem now. Uh, we are trying to study traffic flow and we count cars. So here you see an idealized road traveling from left to right from point one to point two, and say that uh, these two points are one mile apart, but that, that should not be necessarily be the case. Um, so we have a number of cars at one, and we have a number of cars at two. So we have the capital N1 and the capital N2. And then we look at the difference. Uh, the difference uh, at spot two minus spot one. So what can we say already there if we do these counts? Uh, well, we can say something about the concentration. If we count at the same, at, at, at some time, that there are less cars at N2 than at N1, then what that means is that uh, the concentration of cars between 1 and 2 is increasing. So from this simple measure, uh, counting cars at the same time now, uh, we can say something about the evolution of the concentration. Okay, so I was mentioning time, so here it is. Um, so what we actually are interested in is the flow. And how is flow defined? Uh, flow is defined as the number of cars per time unit. That's the Q. Um, so it's not explicit in this slide, but I'm telling you now, the flow of cars is the number of cars per hour. 
with concentration it's the number of cars per mile okay so let's first look at flow uh, so we have two measure points and we subtract the second one from the first uh, so we have our delta our difference in the numbers and that will lead to the difference in the flow so if the delta n is negative then this that means that we have fewer cars at n2 than at n1 then that means that the flow of the car actually decreases um, and what is flow again flow is the number of cars per hour uh, the number of cars per hour that passes uh, in that segment okay so now concentration uh, what is concentration concentration is the number of cars per mile um, so we can define this also formally uh, so here we have a negative sign so you can see that in deriving the delta k the change in concentration I'm flipping uh, the order in which I do the subtraction so I'm subtracting the number of cars at 1 and the number of cars at n2 because in the direction of travel um, I want to indicate uh, what happens with the concentration so if we have that uh, the number of cars uh, decreases so the delta n uh, the delta n is still the n2 minus n1 if the flow decreases then that means that the concentration increases um, so that's the opposite sign uh, that we must respect um, so we have flow and counts uh, that are related, that are of the same sign. Uh, the car count, the difference in car count, is uh, opposite sign as the concentration. Okay, so we are counting. Now let's see how we can get to from a discrete to continuous model. We have two expressions. Uh, we have uh, flow and concentration. Um, and they are linked by these delta n's. Uh, so we have derived um, the, we have defined the change in flow and also the change in concentration. That's another way of seeing this. Uh, we have continuity, so we assume that in the segment that we look, uh, no cars are disappearing or appearing, so there is no exit or and also no entry. Um, so that means that we must have the continuity. So the delta n, if we measure this, uh, in so that's the same delta n that we are looking at. So. Um, that means that we have our first equation, our first discrete equation, that actually is saying that the change in, so the change of the flow over the miles of the delta Q over delta X, that that is compensated by the change in concentration over the time unit hour. So, change in flow per mile plus change in concentration per hour equals zero. So, mathematically, we can get to our first partial differential equation, and that is the continuity equation. So we have instead of the big deltas, uh, we have the partials now. So we look at the partial uh, derivatives. So flow Q is a function of space and time. Also concentration is a function of space and time. So what is kind of a, a little bit, uh, so I hope that uh, this derivation so far made sense. 
And what is a little bit awkward about this is that we have two different functions here. We have a Q and we have a K. So um, how can we do anything with that? Well, it's so we have two actors here. To make it even more complicated, we will introduce velocity, uh, speed. But let's first uh, reflect on this a little bit. Um, so for this first exercise, I hope everybody can do this, uh, we look at the units. Uh, so flow is the number of cars per hour. Concentration is the number of cars per mile. You see in this equation that the number of cars per hour is divided by mile. The number of cars per mile is divided by time. And that's the solution of this exercise. Uh, so uh, the equation has two terms but and two different functions, but we're actually adding up uh, the same quantities. Um, number of cars, well, that's, that's, that's for you to uh, fill in. Okay, so we have two actors, uh, flow and concentration. Let's add speed to it. And this is where the green shields model comes in. Uh, we have the concentration number of cars per mile speed is number of miles per hour um, so you can kind of see that uh, there is a correlation here uh, so and this in the green shields model there is a linear relationship uh, so here we write speed in function of concentration so when the concentration is zero then we can drive as fast as we like. Uh, this could be infinite, but we have uh, we are limited uh, either by the speed limit or by the if we don't if there's nobody there, no no cars on the road, also no police cars and no cameras. Then let's say we can go as fast as our car will allow us or the 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 the, the condition of the road. So there is the free traffic speed. So even modeling that is already interesting project on its own. But here, for this purpose of this lecture, it is a constant. Uh, the other constant that is there is the traffic jam. So when is speed zero? When the road is completely saturated with cars. So there is a certain density that's there. So knowing this relation so the, the center point, so many slides have a bottom line, a conclusion, but here uh, the most important relation is actually the equation in the middle and the blue line. So that is the Green Shields model. Um, we can flip it. We can see, uh, so the speed is something that we can control when we drive. Uh, so we can see this a little bit as the independent variable, although here the independents are time and mainly time. Um, so in, in, in a way time still has to come in here as well. We are just taking a sh section of the entire uh, manifold. So we can flip, so the beauty of this model is that it is a simple model and it allows us to uh, can see the, the relationship between the speed and the concentration. So one can say that if the, for, if the speed is the free traffic speed, then this can only happen when there is no traffic. And on the other hand, if there is no speed, well, this happens when, uh, as a consequence then of that, the concentration is the traffic jam density, the jam density, essentially. Okay, uh, so that's the model. Um, how does one come up with such a model? Well, one uh, observes and uh, one 
there is this natural relationship whether this is a line is up to the modeler so you have the red dots here uh, one does a fit uh, a linear least square fits and one gets the blue line um, so in in a way for a very particular road uh, this and that's the, the that's the proposal for the project is actually to figure out that for your favorite piece of highway uh, figure out uh, what are the constants uh, the free traffic speed and the uh, jam density note that um, the least square fit will actually figure that out for you um, so in practice you can only observe some red dots and you will get the jam density from the intercept of your least square fit the same for the free traffic speed it's probably very very uh, seldom that you have the road all to yourself uh, so you may never observe uh, the uh, free speed but you can compute it from a least square fit okay um, let's continue now um, so what about flow actually let's continue we are actually halfway uh, in the slides and not halfway in time so I'm doing well here um, so we are actually interested in traffic flow um, so we have the speed and the concentration they are linearly co correlated remember that flow is expressed as the number of cars per hour and we have the following observation there is no flow if uh, there is uh, no concentration so if there is no car no flow if there is if the traffic is completely jammed so everything is standing to a standstill then there is uh, no flow either logically so a linear model is determined by two points so we can't really make a line between these two zeros so then we don't have anything so we have to we can all use a linear model um, so that's the conclusion this um, also we have somehow the maximum flow that is in between the jam density and zero um, so we will look at the parabola uh, parabola is the simplest next to the line is the simplest model so we look at a concave down parabola okay um, here is the parabolic model um, so we have three parameters now to decide um, an a naught and actually the a naught uh, which is the simplest one um, and that's going to be fixed very quickly we have that there is no flow if there is no uh, if the concentration is zero no flow no car no constant so we have two parameters left then let's take the derivative uh, the derivative of the shape so what is the uh, tangent vector um, or what is the magnitude of this tangent vector uh, the, the red vector that is the a1 and we also can say something about the sign uh, so um, I picked uh, a nice symmetric model and because of this choice uh, you also see that the maximum flow occurs at half of the jam density uh, that's a choice of the model uh, again uh, at least square fit will determine if for a particular highway that is good or very bad um, okay so we have the jam density we have uh, the uh, flow we have the concentration um, and this is these are kind of these pictures uh, where is Waldo uh, so where is the uh, free traffic speed um, so not to leave you too much in suspense a look at the colors and you get the hint um, so in what follows I will try to 
make clear uh, where the free traffic speed comes into this picture. But let us first try to define, uh, say more about the concavity, for example, and the shape of this parabola, uh, the, the, the algebraic expression for this parabola. Okay, uh, we have no flow at the traffic jam, so we used one of the uh, zeros of this uh, quadratic, um, let's use the other one. So at the jam density, we also have a zero, um, so that means that the A2 can be specified. So the A2, uh, the concavity, you see now that this is negative, and you can kind of see that the red vector uh, has to be pointing upwards. Uh, so it has to be going up. Uh, so that's a consequence from the concavity up, uh, uh, concavity down, that at zero we must have uh, this, um, this upward pointing vector, because A2 is a negative number. The jam density is also not zero, so I should have pointed this out before I jumped to the conclusion. So what did this slide do? Uh, what is now important is to look at, so the first line on this slide is what we derived on the previous slide. So the A not dropped out, so we can factor out the K. And actually we look at then this linear factor, and this linear factor we can solve for the A2. So we have actually now all the constants A0, A1, A2, we have eliminated them, we have specified them. So that's the conclusion at the top. Uh, so we have this expression. And now, I, and now we can complete the picture if we go back to the continuity equation. So we see the, if you look at the continuity equation and still remember the units of the two terms, then we see that the, 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 the vector uh, at zero, the length of this vector must be the speed. So let this sink in for a while. One can see it again if we look at uh, the units. Uh, so we are multiplying, we are multiplying the miles per hour by the number of cars per mile. So that's a very quick way to see, to verify uh, that the velocity has to come in there. So that whatever is there has to be a velocity. Okay, so I left this essentially as an exercise uh, to ponder on this. Um, I once took a course in philosophy and the professor said, hey, when you take notes, uh, take special care for the arrows. Uh, so arrows, and in mathematics we use this uh, double, uh, the big, uh, the equal, and then the arrow. So be careful for those symbols here. Um, so this is not a proof-driven course, but you must, uh, we always have this reality check. Um, so if something is not working out, um, with our reasoning, with our mathematical deduction, we will come up with uh, a model that does not make sense. Okay, so with the units, uh, you can, and the continuity equation, so in some sense this is the continuation of the first exercise. Uh, with this first exercise, we can continuing it, using the continuity equation. Uh, to justify the shape, uh, the expression that we derived for flow, linking it to concentration. 
with the two important parameters in there, the free traffic speed and the jam density. So the Green Shields model is a very rich model. Uh, at the same time, it is uh, extremely simple uh, to start with. Um, so it, it has a lot of symmetry in this. So it's very uh, pleasing uh, from a mathematical perspective. Okay, um, we can we have uh, the relationship, the linear relationship between concentration and velocity. So the concentration becomes zero if uh, the velocity equals uh, the free traffic velocity of the free traffic speed. V is the free traffic speed. Then you see that we have one minus one. If the speed is zero, then we have the jam density. So again, the left side of this arrow. Uh, it's a simple algebraic relationship. If you do not trust this, uh, use SymPy. Uh, uh, the uh, simple calculation will actually give us exactly the same parabola. Um, but where we have now flipped the concentration for speed. So it's the same drawing, but the labels are different. So now we have the maximum flow at half of the traffic speed, the free traffic speed. So this might give you somehow an idea uh, that how speed limits are set. Uh, so speed limits are not, uh, are often set to have the maximum flow. Uh, so the uh, free traffic speed, you could say, is how far your car can go. If you are in, in Germany, that, that's the rule there uh, with the Autobahn. But you could also say that's what the maximum speed is what the road will and the conditions will allow you uh, on averages but then half that is actually the speed that will give you uh, the maximum flow uh, so in some sense the speed limit uh, should never be the maximum possible limit that, that it would still be safe to drive even. but uh, the speed limit should be set to optimize the flow uh, of the traffic all right, um, so we had three actors, uh, flow, speed, concentration. Um, what we pick as independent, uh, so it's actually a three-dimensional model. Um, use again SymPy to solve this exercise. And then also explain uh, the picture here. So we have the maximum flow but then we have the uh, the two areas and also the slopes can be seen here so we have this they are exactly the same slopes uh, and the slopes can be interpreted um, here in this case by the jam uh, density so we have the area where there is congestion that's the bottom part of this uh, parabola, so now it's the same parabola, but it's tilted, and uh, we have the uh, area where there is no congestion at all. So in an earlier uh, lecture, I once asked uh, um, to model the transition uh, between the uh, the rush hour traffic. What is the, the the so you would think that you get to this here congestion is rush hour traffic uh, out rush hour traffic you go over there and this actually transitions uh, here in this maximum flow okay now I should move my head away um, because uh, this is actually the central picture so what have we done uh, we have related in the green shields model we have concentration and speed uh, then we derived uh, speed or flow in function of speed and uh, the last picture which is still on the slide here we have the speed in function of the flow uh, so in some sense this is the 
these are the projections of a three-dimensional picture on the coordinate planes. Um, I will not draw the picture, perhaps I should uh, have attempted that, I still have uh, ample time. Uh, but this could be another um, exercise. Uh, I'm also very, um, in this lecture, I have not no Jupyter notebook and no tools used. Uh, so that's still open, uh, perhaps as an exercise. But the main point is that we get to uh, the traffic flow. Uh, so we are now at the third part. So the continuity equation was kind of an odd equation. Um, so it had two different functions in there. Not at all as the transport equation. Uh, but remember that the continuity equation was linking the flow and the concentration. So here you can see it still on the middle of the car, uh, at the middle of the slides. Uh, but what actually we want to do is that we want to uh, bring in speed and uh, in, in, in a way this uh, slide here um, can probably dwell some time on this this is almost the most important slide of the lecture as far as partial differential equations goes it is linking it's deriving the transport equation from the continuity equation so when we studied air quality modeling we were uh, studying density profiles and then if we have a traveling smoke uh, smoke uh, plume um, then we have this traveling profile so here we do it more the proper way we have a problem uh, we had the continuity equation and now what we do is we bring in speed so what it actually says is that how can you see flow you can see flow as concentration times speed again you can see this with the units so we are multiplying the number of cars per mile concentration times mile per hour so we get the number of cars per hour so it is as simple as that uh, so replace uh, q by v times concentration and then we get the traveling waves now with the air quality modeling um, we said that the transport equation was actually not so useful uh, because one would hope and expect also that when you have uh, fumes there are diffusion but with cars, um, one can assume that the concentration stays the same. So you have a traveling uh, wave, you, you have a traveling profile, traveling density profile. Okay, so the x minus uh, speed times time is important. Um, and you know this from calculus, but... Um, let's put this here a little bit in a broader context so one can ask two questions and they actually are the same question if you travel you can ask how fast is you are you traveling how much distance do you cover in one hour or the other question which is actually the same question if you know one you know the other you can ask how much time is, do you need to travel one mile um, it depends on the perspective if you're uh, interested in time you can only spend one hour how far can you get or uh, you only want to get one mile how much time do you need for doing that depending on what is the input um, the questions are phrased uh, with a picture um, so the slide I'm reading it from the bottom to the top um, let's look at the pictures uh, so observe the labels with the axis um, so at the left picture we have uh, time as the horizontal so we time moves forward and we can't do anything with it 
uh, we see how x is changing. So we have, uh, we then distinguish between if we have a fast slope. So here you see the geometric interpretation of speed. Uh, you have a very uh, high, you have a fast uh, moving car or you have a slow moving car. Um, at the right uh, picture, we flip uh, time, see time actually as a function of space, and then uh, the labels. So if it, if you can cover, if uh, if you can cover uh, a very large portion um, on the horizontal axis, with a relatively small uh, portion on the vertical axis, then you're moving fast. Otherwise, you're moving slow. Okay, so now what is the concept that comes into it? So, so for any constant, uh, we can uh, look at characteristic curves. Uh, so the solutions to the ordinary, differ to the partial differential equation, to the transport equation, are these lines. In general, they are curves. They can be nonlinear. Okay, so let's stick with the linear here. Uh, so what do we get out of this model? Well, we can uh, visualize uh, an accelerating platoon of cars. Um, so with ordinary differential equations, we can justify somehow the three second rule between two cars. But now we can study, and this is again the distributed nature of partial differential equations, we can study an entire platoon of cars. Um, so what happens, so you see what happens at some point at t equals t naught, all cars drive at the same speed, but then the first, uh, and there is the same distance, so uh, we have here we, the, the evolution of the road, um, and here the uh, time that elapses. So we look at, uh, so if we look at time t naught, then this is where the first car is. If we look at time t1, this is the position of the first car. And you see that uh, the slopes are different between the cars. Uh, so f first of all, this is a safe situation. Uh, none of the lines intersect, uh, so there are no collisions here. Uh, but what happens is that as the first car is accelerating in this picture, so the uh, slope goes more towards the uh, right, then we see that also all the other cars are following suit. Uh, so also all the other cars are uh, driving faster, and you could see this alternatively, that the spacing between the cars is actually growing. So just with two-dimensional pictures, you can uh, explain a lot of the natural uh, occurrence, uh, what we observe in traffic, uh, which also is another justification for the model. Um, here is an exercise. Uh, what happens if uh, there is a fast-moving car that uh, meets a slow-moving truck? Uh, so. Uh, and by meeting means not a collision, uh, but uh, what happens is that now we look at time, so it's important that we always uh, look at time. So we have the, the very steep slope, so for the slow moving truck, um, it actually takes uh, some time to cover, um, so I think I have this picture now wrong, um, so it takes a lot of time, I think the, the, I'm sorry, this is embarrassing, so in the horizontal axis, it should be an X, uh, so for the slow moving truck here, um, we have that the delta X should be very small, but we have a very large uh, delta T. Um, the fast-moving car has uh, very uh, almost horizontal slopes, 
So uh, this is delta x here again. So delta x, uh, a large x, but small time uh, pattern. Now, if you take these cross sections, uh, you see that the blue line does not intersect uh, the green line. So everything stays uh, at, a safe, at a safe distance. Uh, there is this uh, intersection, the shock. Uh, after this line, actually, also the car has to travel at the same speed as the slow moving truck. So the purpose of the exercise, write this in your own words make tell the story and that is the uh, benefit of the characteristic curves okay so uh, let us complete the model now uh, we have diffusion uh, so we can add a term to it so there's a parameter alpha square there so this is the positive constant uh, with the diffusion model so we studied the fusion model for heat when something is cooling down. Uh, so we have now also the same problem that we studied with the air quality, but the context is entirely different. Uh, so at a traffic light, uh, there is a high concentration of cars. Uh, so that is the red curve. Then uh, K2 is the moment uh, where the light turns green and after that uh, the platoon essentially dissolves uh, so the third curve the k3 is uh, when <coughs> excuse me is when we have the normal flow of the road so we have three flow patterns if you like the flow when there is uh, the, the concentration, I'm sorry, I'm saying this again all wrong. So we have the concentration profile, um, although looking at the picture here, I have, well, actually, yes. So if I would m measure flow, I would you look at the different uh, parabola. <coughs> but I hope it is clear what I want to say. Um, perhaps I said too many things. So let me pause for a second um, and let it sink in again. Okay, so you have the benefit of pausing this recording, so I will move on. And actually, I'm probably to the point where you want to move on as well, um, either to the literature, that's the main purpose. And I hope that uh, <clears throat> you have had some benefit from this. So, um, reality check, uh, this is an industrial math course, um, so pick a road, um, you, can, uh, <clears throat> you can do the project in pairs and uh, you can observe or you can, uh, what you can do is you can uh, have two cell phone cameras um, at a highway bridge, uh, bridges apart and you tape it so you and your partner at the same time you make a video <coughs> excuse me you make a video for an hour um, and you then analyze uh, the video and uh, it would be good to do this two days um, so you do it one day and then you do it the next day um, so in some sense this is also a machine learning uh, data model can you so would it make sense for example to have a variable speed limit uh, based on the time of the day if you like um, so and, and uh, this is also the time for big data so you can uh, do this uh, continuously if you like and uh, there might be cameras that are actually doing this continuously so you have an enormous uh, amount of data but to keep the scope of the project um, um, focused so you have one hour of data on two different days uh, you have these points 
uh, you have the concentration in terms of the speed. Um, note that with the green shields model, uh, we assumed that this was linear. So this is the green shields model. Does that make sense? Uh, so it's so you can do a linear model. So you, the, it's kind of interesting to know what is the jam density and what is the free speed. Um, that's interesting to compute. You can also compute the uh, flow in terms of the speed. And uh, we've studied the regression many times. Uh, so here linear fit or quadratic fit will do. Um, so but standard tools, what you know from numerical analysis or applied linear algebra, you can do this. Um, so the purpose here is um, can with the green shields model you can actually predict the traffic of the next day um, okay um, so I'm done here uh, so there are many other variations on this project that one can do so in our textbook uh, the last section on chapter 11 is actually on this uh, simplest transport equation. So pedagogically the textbook uh, has it rather a little bit backwards to my opinion. Um, it gets easier as you get uh, farther down. Um, the transport equation is uh, a very fruitful model because we are all familiar with traffic. Um, it's also extensively studied. Uh, a very So I based uh, this lecture on chapters 4 and 7 in the Transportation Research Board Special Report. Um, there the Green Shields model is explained and there are many many other models uh, there. Um, so that would be a different type of project um, where you would try to figure out for a specific segment of road what is actually the best model. Um, and most likely it might not be a quadratic. Um, so there are other models there. Okay, uh, I hope this uh, lecture was interesting. Um, and I sign off with this.